Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, it's the world of YM. We've got something slightly different now, it's actually a new build, I did mention it on the live stream last Thursday, but we're going to go in depth into the ET spaceship, this is the Golden Armour Phone Home 1. Now before I get started into the ins and outs of the ship and uh, some of the challenges that I'm going to come across, uh, I just want you to know that I am building this at the same time as Phil Siegel is over on the Sprueverse channel. Now I'm building the Golden Armour version of this garage kit. Phil Siegel is actually building the Yay Monsters version of the uh, ship. So what I've done is I've put the link to the Sprueverse website down there. He also has a website, Sprueverse.com, and basically he's showing his updates on Instagram as well. So all of that's in the uh, video description, and I'll also link it at the end of the video. And you'll be able to see the differences to what I'm doing, to what Phil's doing, and some of the things that we're coming across and ways to come across problems and, uh, and how we overcome things like the electrics, lighting, and some of the discrepancies which I'm going to go through uh, in this video uh, from the film from scene to scene how the spaceship keeps changing uh, with different light configurations and stuff like that. Now I think these uh, items are actually called garage kits. They've actually been moulded by someone. They've been made from clay moulds, I guess, and then created a, uh, a moulding station to actually pour resin into that. And then we've got that here. And then it's up to us to fabricate all the extra details that we want to put on top of that. So I think the first thing to do, uh, probably the best way to housekeep this, is to break down each individual part and show you what we've got. Now if you look at this on the side camera, you can see it's quite tall. It's actually just over a foot tall. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off the mat here and I'm going to break it down into its individual sections. So the first thing we're looking at is the dome here. As you can see, because it's casting resin, it's going to need hardly any work to prepare this for painting. Uh, but I have been looking at this just to look at all the lights we're going to be putting in this. Now you can see all the indents around here where lights would go. Probably best on the side camera actually. Um, and they do have lights on there, but uh, if you look at these pictures here, there are discrepancies in them. Uh, some there's no lights, some there's yellow lights and red lights, uh, and they do change throughout the film. And I've noticed that uh, while I've taken screen grabs just for reference photos through the whole thing. But uh, this dome is gonna be chromed, and to do that, it's gonna have a mirrored finish of black gloss. I'm gonna try and get the black gloss as mirrored as I can. I need to be able to see myself in the black gloss. Then I've got some Alcad 2 chrome, which I'm gonna be putting over the top of it to see how it goes. Now we've got this row here, which is sort of like a mottled effect silver rather than chrome. So this whole thing's chrome apart from this seam here. So I've got to figure out how I'm doing that. Now, uh, I have been watching Lou Dalmasso's videos. Now, if you haven't seen them, I'm going to link them up here. He's got five videos on there, roughly about an hour each. And I have been absolutely captivated by his building to see what he's done. And it's given me ideas what I'm going to be doing on my one. So if you haven't checked out Lou's channel, then go over here and uh, check out the playlist for his uh, ET Phone Home 1 build, because uh, it's, it's absolutely really amazing. <laughs> So that's what the dome looks like. Now as you can see inside it's being reinforced just with some rough sort of texture on here. It looks like some sort of, uh, I don't know if the resin's been bubbled up or it's another material in there, but it's, uh, it's quite heavy to be honest with you. And it's weight is gonna be a thing on this build, which is gonna be the uh, concern I think. Not so much with the ship, but with the supports for the legs when they come round. But we'll be looking at that last uh, because obviously I'm taking the ship apart from the top down. Now the second section is the middle section looking just like this. And once again, I've got some great reference photos here for these lights here. Looks like we've got two red lights here with a white one in the center. Uh, and that goes all the way around here. And the holes that you can see here are for the engines. And this is what the engines look like. Hollow in the inside. And again, these are gonna need to be lit as well. They do come with all the supports through that. And I do have a bag of supports, as you can see there of everything we're going to be doing but what i'm trying to do is just do sections at a time because it is a little bit overwhelming if you have everything on the table at once and you just think i need to do this i need to do this i need to do this which is why i'm going to be building it from the bottom upwards so i'm going to get all the bottom done the ramps the legs the lighting at the bottom and work my way up but uh, these engines are absolutely brilliant you see they're more organic than uh, I believe the Yay Monsters one is. And I believe Phil in his last video has just added some texture to the outside of these to make them a little bit more non-symmetrical if you like. But we do have some extra parts for these which are gonna make this look brilliant. And that's basically the grill here, which will go on the bottom. Obviously we'll have a light in there, 
but we have a grill that goes on top and then we've got the ring going around there like that so that makes that look really good we got to repeat that eight times now another discrepancy in the film if you have a look at these pictures is that these are actually lights rather than engines and they just light down onto the surface you'd think because later on in the film suddenly these lamps suddenly turn into engines so uh, and i've got a picture to show that here as well now obviously the lamp stroke engines are going to be mounted around this section here we've got the brackets to put them in plenty of ways that we can actually feed some wires through here i will have to drill a hole at the bottom here because all the wires and the electrics are going to be stored in the base of the ship here now the next two sections we've got here are the light rings and this is basically the beating heart of the ship and this is the bit that i really do need to get right now if you have a look at the video here you can see the bottom ring revolves clockwise and the top ring revolves anti-clockwise and I need to come up with a solution for that which I'm going to show you what I've done at the moment so far uh, we've got some hieroglyphics in the uh, middle there as well now this uh, I've seen painted so many different colours I've seen the vents painted red I believe Lou Dalmasso's painted them sort of like um, a copper colour gold i don't know i'm colorblind i'm hoping that's right lou um i'm going to be painting mine silver and relying on the light effects to give it that sort of goldish copperish effect um but that is what the inner rings look this comes in two parts you've got one section here and then the bottom section here so we are going to need a good glue as well which is going to be an epoxy resin glue not quite sure which one i'm using yet i will be using ca glue on the lighter parts though there is a bit of flashing here that i need to break off as you can see there just done that now but uh, i will tidy these parts up before i put them together but uh, we're not ready to do that stage yet but i want to show you my electric fix for this and the electric fix looks just like this now i know this looks like a, a hell of a lot of work but basically i'm creating two rings i've already created this first ring and i'm going to be creating another ring which is going through that it's going to sit on top there so we've got two leds to each point of this circuit board now this circuit board i believe is from mobius i think this is for a jupiter 2 uh, ufo from lost in space uh, all i did was cut off the leds and then soldered new leds and i printed this I made this and printed it on um, an SDL file. I used Tinkercad for that to get all of these LEDs all in order. And then what you've got is when you turn it on, as you can see here, it revolves around. And we've got, I've alternated yellow and white lights. Now I do have a speed control here so I can actually decide what speed we want it. So we've got it really slow or hold you fast <laughs> but uh, once I've set it to where I want it I'll actually encompass this in the ship because I don't want to change it once I've got it to the speed I want the only things that we're going to have from the outside of the ship will be a power terminal we'll obviously lose the battery and we'll put a, um, a 9 volt adapter in there so we can just plug this in and light everything up on the ship so the idea is this is going clockwise when I do the next ring at the top which I have got ready just needs to be soldered in that's gonna obviously the wires are gonna go down but that's gonna sort of fit on top like that going the other way around now I do have or I've made uh, a sort of skirt that's gonna go around this which is 3.5 mils and what that's gonna do is gonna give the exact gap to make sure that those lights sit in the middle between this section and this section here the only other thing I've got to do then once that skirts on between this section is to put some light block just around that section but all of these would have been free 3d printed so i don't know if i can give you an idea of how this looks in the ship but if i uh put that in there like that you've got the idea there of how that looks on the bottom ring there now this wasn't easy to solder in uh, it actually took quite a while and funny enough i did a time lapse
but I'm happy with my idea for that. So uh, what we're gonna do, look at the next layer. The next layer is just basically a ring here. Now this has got some protection on it, which I need to peel off. This is actually clear when I peel it off, but I am gonna be painting it silver, uh, just like the rings that are gonna be sitting above it. And basically this separates this from the base section. And this is what the base section looks like here. Now, as you can see, we've got the three holes here for the legs. Um, and we've got this section here for the engine. Now, the engine here, oops, goes around that way. As you can see in these videos here, we have blue lights going around here, 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 and here. We do have some lenses to put in here, so it doesn't matter what light source I put inside, I can put a blue lens on top of that and light them up blue. Uh, at the bottom's the biggest discrepancy. As you can see, some of these pictures here, you've got a red engine, and some of these pictures here, you've got a pink engine. Uh, most of the time it seems pink though, so I'll be having a pink light going in here, and then all of these lights around it here are red, as you can see in that picture there. So just this one unit is gonna have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 LEDs just in that section alone. But it is gonna light the desk up pretty good once that's on there there. Now, when this goes on, it's actually gonna have to sit just a little bit above the de desk there. I'll have ET pointing to where it's gonna have to. It's gonna have to sit just so we do get that light effect on the ground there. Uh, and then turning this over again, you can see that where these legs go in, we do have some pre-drilled holes that we can actually mount these to. But as I said, because of the weight of the ship, I may have to reinforce that uh, and make them a little bit more sturdy. Uh, the only other thing to notice is the door here. And I took plenty of pictures of the door because I want the effect of that round window there with an ET figurine standing in. And I do have a little ET figurine, as you can see there who's gonna stand in it. This is just a resin printed ET, very fragile, so I'm keeping this very safe. Now, I didn't know what shape this door should be because that round section there is actually in the ship and then you've got a square section around the top there. I think I'm just gonna leave it round like that and then what I'll do is I will uh, coat this from the back with some diffusing material. Now, I've got this stuff for that. Now, this is, oh, it's a cross between paper and plastic. It's more plastic than paper. Uh, but this is brilliant for diffusing lights. I don't even know what it's called. I've had it for quite a while. And I'm going to be using this in two places. I'm going to be using this on the door like you saw there. But I'm also going to create a ring. Or well, more of these actually. We're going to need two of these together. Round the inner section there to put in with the lights. Just to diffuse the lights as they're going around the uh, heart of the ship there. And the last thing we've got is the feet here. Now the feet does have a little hole there for an LED. Uh, to be honest with you, the lights for this actually uh, go on three sides of the uh, leg. You've got one here, one on the ankle bracket of the leg, and one near the top as well. We don't have one on that section there, so I might fill that uh, and actually put the lights where they go. I know Lou Dalmasso's put a light in here. It looks really good as well, so I've been conflicted about whether do I put a light here or do I put it further up. Something I did miss off, the top of the ship looks like that. This is gonna need a lot of work because as you can see, it's quite solid at the bottom now. What we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to hollow this out so I can put some lamps in it. And I want it hollowed out for a couple of reasons. First off, we've got the top section that needs to go on there and I wanna light this. So I'm gonna have to have some uh, light sources going up through that. I need lights for these sections here, as I mentioned, but I want a peg or something in here to hold that to the dome because at the moment, and in every video that you look on the Golden Armour site, they're just pretty much balancing this on top. But I want this to be sort of like a permanent fix that if I need to take it off, I can. So that can go on just like that. We've got some other detail bits here like the ramp. This is clear, as you can see there. Uh, and it's actually been sort of weathered with the uh, raised sections on this to look like um, a corrugated grate. Uh, and this will go on the frame here like that and that's gonna make the ramp. We've actually got two of these because the ramp sort of folds, uh, I believe it's this way around actually, but uh, I may be wrong, it may be the other way, <laughs> but uh, kind of like that. Sort of hinges up as well so that the uh, ramp can go up, but we'll design that when we do the base. But as I said, it is gonna be the base that we're working on first. And the first thing I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start assembling the feet and the legs just so I can decide how we're gonna actually support the whole weight of the ship. Now I said I'm gonna use it more than once. We've got a plethora of reference photos here which I've screen grabbed from the film. There are discrepancies on it and I don't think what you do is gonna be right or wrong and that's the whole point of doing these builds. I'm not gonna to hear to tell you if Phil's one's the best or if my one's the best uh, or if Yay Monsters is the best or is Golden Armour the best. I'm just seeing what can we do with a garage kit 
to make our own version of the ET spaceship, which I think is really good. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what sort of different ideas we come up with. So once again, if you check out Phil's channel, and uh, once again, I'll put the link down here, you'll see the Yay Monsters one and some of the work he's done on that. And check out his Instagram as well. He's done daily updates of what he's doing that with that. He's a little bit ahead of me at the moment, I think, but uh, I've been working on the electrics. I don't know how Phil's tackled that yet. So uh, I've got to finish that today. So we've got that ring section printed out. But uh, I really hope you like that introduction to the video. If anyone I'm watching my live stream as you noticed i got my et working so he's going to be following me on with this adventure uh, if you did like it please remember to give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please remember to subscribe other than that take care